Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. My name is Lore. This video is a continuation of my TBR2 series. My TBR20 series. This is part two. So if y'all haven't watched episode one, check it out because I think it's a good episode. I mean, I made it, so I hope I would think that. I literally just finished filming the last clip for the last vlog I did in this series. So I thought while I was sitting here with my camera out, I might as well start the next vlog off. Vlog off? That sounds weird. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do now for this TBR series is pick a book from the TBR jar. Yes, guys, the time has come. We are finally going to be picking the TBR out of the TBR jar. So let's give it, let's shake it up. Oh my gosh, I'm kind of scared. Okay. Oh my gosh, Weathering Heights. I just read that in the last one. Okay, so that doesn't count. We're gonna do it again. All right, ready? Okay. Oh, the fifth season. I just finished a high fantasy. <sighs> I just finished reading Malice. If I force myself to read the fifth season and I'm not enjoying it because I just finished another high fantasy, am I going to set myself up for failure? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick to the rules. I'm going to stick to what my TBR says. Let's pick out the next book that we'll be reading. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, Roanoke, a, The Abandoned Colony by Karen or Dahl Cooperman. So that's actually a book I was planning on reading for my senior thesis, my senior seminar, whatever it's called. I don't even know. I'm in that class, I should know. But I actually am thinking about changing my topic from this but yeah I still own this book so I will be making myself read this and finally let's get the last book that I will be reading in this vlog oh wait actually I forgot that I was able to get the lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver on Libby so I'm actually already 28 pages into this so I think I'm just gonna have this be the third book for this um episode or vlog so all right so what do we have we let me go get let me get the books for this vlog I will be reading the fifth season by N.K. Jemison, which is I believe an adult high fantasy novel that's about everything I know the next book I'll be reading during this vlog is Roanoke the abandoned colony and this is a non-fiction uh, historical book written by Karen or Dahl Cooperman. And I'll be reading The Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver. So I think right now what I want to do is start listening to more of the audiobook for The Lacuna and color while I'm doing it, you know, like a Saturday night kind of chill, listen to an audiobook, color, um, I'm not great at coloring as y'all will see because I'm going to do a little clip. y'all so i am officially 40 pages into the the uh, what, what are they called roanoke the abandoned colony and essentially so far karen ordahl cooperman has just set up some background information needed to fully understand like the reasoning behind uh why the english chose to settle at roanoke and now we're just getting into the um indigenous peoples who were there before colonization 
so I haven't gone, I haven't read that chapter yet because I don't know if y'all can tell, but I'm so tired. <laughs> so, but anyway, tomorrow I'm going to definitely continue reading this book. I'm excited to learn more about, you know, the people who were already there. If y'all are unaware of Ro the Rono Colony, um, should I explain that? So it's been about two days since I last updated the vlog here, but I just wanted to come on and say that I am officially halfway through Roanoke, the abandoned colony. I, I've enjoyed parts of it and I've also found other parts of it boring. I feel like that's just what happens when you read a history nonfiction book um some aspects of history will be more interesting and intriguing to learn than others and that all depends on who you are as a person um however I do have kind of a funny story so in one of my classes that's completely unrelated to Roanoke and anything this author has put out my professor started discussing one of her other novels over Jamestown and I just thought that was such a weird coincidence like I'm reading one of her books right now and my professor who teaches nothing to do with anything she writes about decides to mention her it was kind of like one of those weird moments that aren't really that exciting but kind of like I am on page 81 of the lacuna and I still could not tell y'all what the main plot or big story of this book is going to be. So far, all I know and all I can tell is we're following a boy and we're reading essentially his diary of the time when him and his mother left his father to go to Mexico and live there with the mother's new boyfriend and then there's 80 pages of them just in Mexico, and I seriously don't know anything more than that. I I don't know the direction this book is going to take, but I am enjoying it. It's entertaining so far. I, I mean, that's all I can say so far, so I'll update y'all when I get a bit further into this book. It's been a while since I updated, but let's just jump into where I'm at with the reading for this vlog. I finished Roanoke, The Abandoned Colony by Karen Ordahl Kupperman? Cooperman? Cooperman? I always say it wrong. In the end, I ended up giving this book three stars and my reasoning for that is it got a bit boring in the middle of the book and I was uninterested and kind of wanting to get to the part where we're already at the colony. It's established and what occurred there. We didn't get to that information until about more than halfway through this book. So if y'all are interested in reading more of the information surrounding the colony before it's established, this book would be perfect. But if you're interested in the colony and like living in the colony and then the abandonment of the colony, I would say maybe choose a different book because that doesn't even get touched on until about chapter seven, which is more than halfway through this book. However, there were parts of the book before the colonists were established at Roanoke that I did enjoy and found super informative, for example, on page 48, it states, Modern scholars believe that Native American societies of the Southeast were moving in the direction of true statehood and away from the earlier system of very loosely connected chiefdoms, each controlling a single village or band. Since this line of development was interrupted by the coming of the Europeans, we will never know what those states would have looked like. So again, this isn't anything like surprising, of course. We will never know what might have been. Well, another like paragraph that I found super interesting, I'm not gonna read it out, so don't worry about being super bored with that, was a paragraph on page <clears throat> seven about John Watts, who was an Englishman who 
is known as the greatest pirate that has ever been in this kingdom and the kingdom referring to um england and so literally never knew he existed didn't know him never thought about it but that was made me curious and i'll probably try and check more out about him because that's just that like catchphrase i don't know if that's a catchphrase but that line is intriguing another thing i found to be interesting was chapter five which really went in depth about how the spanish um like approach to native americans and indigenous people versus how the english did it where the english saw what the spanish had done and decided they wanted to take a more um pacifist is that the word um approach to them but in the end we all know that that's not what happened the england the england the English were just as terrible, but we're going to move on from that because I don't really have much more to say about it. Next, I am still reading the lacuna. I am on page 218 and quite frankly, I'm losing interest. I'm, I don't see what the point is of this book. I feel like it's kind of it's losing me i'm getting a little bored there's nothing holding my attention yet um which is weird because currently he is interacting with historical figures of course this is a fictional story so this didn't actually ever happen but within this fictional story he's interacting with historical figures like frida Kahlo and diego rivera and i'm like this is great but what's the point like why what is the point there's there's been no point to this no direction that i can see i'm sure there is i'm probably just missing it which i'm kind of upset about because i love this cover and i thought i was going to really enjoy this but you know what never say never because i still have a little bit more than halfway to go before i'm done with this so maybe it'll turn around and i'll I'll be super into it. So I finished the lacuna tonight and I hated it. I gave it one star for one, having no point or purpose and two, being boring. I feel like the first chunk of this book, whatever a chunk is, but the first chunk of this book was actually kind of intriguing and grabbed my attention. And then the entire rest of the book, I was like, okay, let's go like let's get this over with i'm tired of this book i want to move on so anyway i finished it it's in the past now i gave it one star and now i'm going to move on to the fifth season by nk jemison i'm really not in the mood for a fantasy book right now hey y'all so it's it's been so many weeks that i don't even remember the last time i updated y'all on this vlog I have Milo here with me today. I last left off, I think, I think after I finished the lacuna, that means that I have to finish the fifth season left. Um, so I'm actually a chapter into the fifth season. And here's the thing, I'm just like not in the mood for fantasy. And I don't think it's fair to go into a fantasy book knowing that if I just force myself to read it, I'm not going to enjoy it because I'm just not in the mood for a fantasy book. So what I'm going to do is take the TBR jar and I'm going to draw out another name and I'll read that book and then I'll come back to this one and we'll be good. We'll shake it up, we'll shake it up, we'll shake it up, we'll shake it up. Oh, one fell out. So the one that fell out of the jar is Dominicana by Angie Cruz. Hey, Milo. Hi, baby. Oh, you're playing. He's in a playful mood. God, you're so cute. Let me go grab it for y'all. Okay, so Domenica Dominicana by Angie Cruz follows a f young woman, I believe 15, around 15 years old. And she moves from the Dominican Republic to New York City with a older husband who is abusive. And that's about all I know. Um... So I'm going to start this one and see, I'm going to see if my library has it on Libby because I think it would be a good audiobook 
also. Um, so yeah, let's, gonna, let's get that done. All right, y'all, so it's the next night and I'm wearing the same shirt. Mind your business. So I finished the Mancana by Angie Cruz and I enjoyed it, but I feel like the writing style for me personally just wasn't vibing with me. For example, the author chose to not use quotation marks around dialogue and I found and I found that that really stunted my like what's the word? reading flow like it stopped my reading flow because then I started to get a little bit confused about um like who was really saying what though it was pretty clear it still just kind of made my brain go like trip up so that was one thing and then another thing is I feel like the main character Anna is super fleshed out and I loved reading from her perspective and I loved gaining insight from her um life experiences my problem is the rest of the characters kind of fell a little flat for me and i didn't really understand their motives i felt like they had one purpose in this story that's all their character was there for i still gave it a 3.5 to 3.75 because it was entertaining i learned a lot also this cover is fantastic i love the colors and the symbolism i listened to like a little over half of this on the audiobook and I really liked the narrator, so if you're into audiobooks, and I would suggest checking it out. Also, there's an interview with the author at the end of the audiobook that I found super interesting. Uh, so in the end, I would still recommend this book. Um, personally, it just didn't emotionally hit me like as much as I was expecting it to. Uh, trigger warnings for sexual assaults and abuse. So go into this book knowing that that's going to be in there. What am I going to do with the fifth season? I know that I'm going to like that book, but I have to be in the mood to read it or else I'm setting myself up for failure, like I've said many times. Um, so I'm going to carry that book over into the next vlog in this series. So if you want to see my opinions or my reading journey with um, the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. Stay tuned for the next episode.